This is the second in a two-part Blender video series that demonstrates how to make this vintage microphone. In the first video, we made the main body of the microphone. In this video, we'll make the microphone stand and the microphone cable. Then we'll set up the materials using the new principled shader. This is where we left off in the previous video. Now let's make the bracket that holds the microphone. So press Shift S and select Cursor to Center. Then press Shift A and add a mesh circle. Then drag it down below the microphone. Now rotate it on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 1.2, then Enter. Now press Tab for edit mode. Next, we're going to delete the top half of the circle. So click the Vertex Select button. Then press A once or twice until nothing is selected. Then press B and select all of the vertices above the center. Then press X to delete and select vertices. Now we're going to extrude the top two vertices on the Z axis. So press B and select them. Then extrude by pressing E, then Z, then 2.4, then Enter. Now we'll add some width to it. So press A twice to select all. Then extrude on the Y axis by pressing E, then Y, then 0.5, then Enter. We're going to be putting holes through the top of the bracket, so we need to add more geometry to it. We'll be adding loop cuts 0.5 blender units from the top. To position these precisely, we're going to do it in two steps. First we'll add a loop cut at the top, and then we'll move it down by 0.5 blender units. So press Ctrl R, put the loop cut here, and then left click. Then drag it all the way to the top and left click again. Now move it down on the Z axis by pressing G, then Z, then minus 0.5, then Enter. Now we'll do the same thing to the other side. So press Ctrl R, Put the loop cut here and left click. Then drag it all the way to the top and left click again. Now move it by pressing G, then Z, then minus 0.5, then Enter. We're also going to be putting a hole at the bottom of the bracket in the center, so we need to delete the edge that's there. So click the Edge Select button. Then right click the edge that's at the bottom center to select it. Then press X to delete and select Dissolve Edges. Next, we'll add thickness to the bracket. So press A once or twice to select all. Then extrude along the normals by clicking the Extrude menu, select Region Vertex Normals, then press 0.1, then Enter. Now smooth things out by adding a Subdivision Surface modifier. Set the View and Render values to 3. Next, we're going to extrude and then inset the faces where the holes will be. So click the Face Select button. Then right-click this face to select it. Then extrude by pressing E, then 0.1, then Enter. Then inset by pressing I, then 0.1, then Enter. Now right-click this face to select it. Then press E, then 0.1, then Enter. Then press I, then 0.1, then Enter. Now right-click this face to select it. Then press E, then 0.1, then Enter. Then press I, then 0.1, then Enter. Now we'll do the other side of the holes, but we'll be extruding by a different value. So right-click this face to select it. Then press E, then 0.05, then Enter. Then press I, then 0.1, then Enter. Now right click this face to select it. Then press E, then 0.17, then Enter. Then press I, then 0.1, then Enter. Now right click this face to select it. Then press E, then 0.17, then Enter. Then press I, then 0.1, then Enter. 
Now we'll make the holes. So with this face still selected, hold down the Shift key and right click the face on the other side to add it to the selection. Then from the Mesh menu, select Edges and then Bridge Edge Loops. Now we have a hole. Next, let's add a hole to the other side. So right click this face to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right click the face on the other side to add it to the selection. Then from the Mesh menu, select Edges and then Bridge Edge Loops. Now we'll add a hole to the bottom. So right click this face to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right click the face on the other side to add it to the selection. Then from the Mesh menu, select Edges and then Bridge Edge Loops. Next, we're going to add a couple of edge loops to sharpen the transition between the straight section of the bracket and the holes. So press Ctrl-R, put the edge loop here, and left click. Then drag it up here and left click again. Then do this again on the other side. So press Ctrl-R, put the edge loop here, and left click. Then drag it up here and left click again. Now press Tab for Object Mode, and then click the Smooth button. Now we'll move it into position, so press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then drag it up until the holes in the top of the bracket are aligned with the third row of visible holes in the microphone screen. I'll zoom in for the next step. The inside edges at the top of the bracket should be just touching the sides of the microphone. If they're not, then you can scale the bracket on the x-axis to adjust it. Mine could be a little closer, so I'll press S, then X, then adjust it, and then left click. Now we'll position the bracket from the side view. So press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Then drag the bracket to the center of the microphone. Next, we're going to make the thumb screws that hold the microphone in the bracket. So press Shift S and select Cursor to Center. Then press Shift A and add a mesh circle. Then drag it to the right. Now rotate it on the Y axis by pressing R, then Y, then 90, then Enter. Next, scale it down by pressing S, then 0.35, then Enter. An easy way to zoom in on a selected object is to press the period key on the number pad. Now press tab for edit mode. Then press A once or twice until the whole circle is selected. Then press F to add a face. Now click the face select button. Next we're going to extrude it to give it some thickness. So press E, then 0.45, then enter. Then smooth it out by adding a subdivision surface modifier. Set the view and render values to 3. Next, we'll inset the faces on the left side two times. So right click it to select it. Then press I, then 0 .05, then enter. Then press I again, then 0.59, then enter. Now extrude this face by pressing E, then 0.5, then enter. This stem won't be seen for the thumb screws on the left and right sides, but it will be seen for the one that we add to the bottom. To clean up the end, we'll inset this face two times. So press I, resize it a little, and left click. Then press I again, resize it, and left click. Now we're going to sharpen the edges of the stem by adding a couple of loop cuts. So press Ctrl R, put the edge loop here, and left click. Then drag it near the end and left click again. Then press Ctrl R, put the edge loop here and left click. Then drag it near the other end and left click. Next, click the face select button and then right click the face on the right side of the knob to select it. We're going to inset this face a couple of times which will clean it up. 
but we're going to inset it by specific amounts because we're going to reuse this object later when we make the microphone cable. So press I, then point 0.1, then enter. Then press I, then point 0.42, then enter. Now we'll add ridges around the outside of the knob. So hold down the Alt key and right click one of the faces around the edge to select all of the edge faces. Then click the Extrude menu, select Individual Faces, then press point 0.1, then Enter. Now press Tab for Object Mode and then click the Smooth button. Next, we'll move it into place. So zoom out. And then press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then press G to move and drag the knob over here. Then zoom in. Press G and then move it into position. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view and verify that the knob is centered. Then press 1 on the number pad to return to front view. Next we're going to duplicate the knob and move it to the other side. So press Shift D, then X, then drag it to the left side, and then left click. Then rotate it on the Y axis by pressing R, then Y, then 180, then Enter. Now move it into position. Next we're going to add another knob to the bottom of the bracket. So press Shift D to duplicate, move the knob over here, and left click. Then rotate it on the Y axis by pressing R, then Y, then minus 90, then Enter. Then press G and move it into position. The stem of the knob should extend just a little bit above the hole in the bracket. Next we're going to make the base of the microphone stand. So press Shift S and select Cursor to Center. Then press Shift A and add a mesh circle. Then drag it down here. Next, scale it up in size by pressing S, then 3, then Enter. Now press Tab for Edit Mode. Then press A once or twice until the whole circle is selected. Then press F to add a face. Then click the Face Select button. Now extrude by pressing E, then point .5, then Enter. Then extrude and scale by pressing E, then S, then point .2, then Enter. Then move it up on the Z axis by pressing G, then Z, then point .5, then Enter. Then extrude by pressing E, then point .5, then Enter. Next, add a subdivision surface modifier. Set the view and render values to 2. Now we'll smooth out the bottom, so right click it to select it. Then inset by pressing I, then resize it a little bit, and left click. Then press I again, resize it, and left click. Now we'll smooth out the top, so right click it to select it. Then press I, resize it about this much, and then left click. Then press I again, resize it a little, and left click. Next we'll add some loop cuts to give the shape more definition. So press Ctrl R, put the edge loop here, and then left click and then right click. Then press Ctrl R, put the edge loop here, then left click and then right click. Then press Ctrl R, put the edge loop here, and then left click and right click. Now press Tab for Object Mode and then click the Smooth button. Now we'll move it into place. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then drag it until it's next to the knob. I'm going to save what I have so far. Now let's add the surface that the microphone stand will be sitting on. So left click here to move the 3D cursor. 
Then press Shift A and add a mesh plane. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. Now drag it up until it's even with the base of the microphone stand. Next, we're going to make the microphone cable by modifying one of the thumb screw knobs. So press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Then right click this knob to select it. Then press Shift D to duplicate and move it over here. Then rotate it on the X axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Now scale it down in size by pressing S, then 0.6, then Enter. Then press G and move it into place on the back of the microphone. Then press the period on the number pad to zoom in. You can fine tune the position if you need to. Now press Tab for edit mode and then click the Face Select button. Then right click the center face to select it. We want the cable to look like it is coming out of the knob, so we're going to extrude this face inward. So press E, move the face inward, and then left click. Then we'll add an inset to sharpen the edges. So press I, then Enter. Next, we're going to duplicate this face to make the cable. This will give us two separate meshes, one for the knob and one for the cable. This will make it easier to add separate materials to them later. To duplicate the face without moving it, press Shift D, then right click. Then extrude by pressing E, then drag it outward a short distance and left click. Now let's add a loop cut to sharpen the back edge. So press Ctrl R, put an edge loop here, and left click. Then drag it all the way to the back and left click again. The microphone is going to be rotated, so let's do that now and then we'll finish with the cable. So press 3 on the number pad for right side view and then zoom out until you can see the whole microphone. You don't need to be able to see the microphone stand. Now we need to select all of the objects that make up the microphone. We'll start with the filter which is hard to select by right clicking. So find it in the outliner and select it. Then to add other objects to the selection, hold down the shift key and right click the screen, the piece that goes over the top, the middle ring, the bottom of the microphone, and the knob at the end of the microphone cable. Then rotate it on the x-axis by pressing R, then X, then minus 15, then Enter. Since the microphone doesn't rotate at the thumb screws, we need to recenter it. So drag the microphone until its center is aligned with the thumb screws. Now let's route the microphone cable. So right click the knob at the end of the cable to select it and then zoom in. Then press tab for edit mode. Now click the face select button and then right click this end face to select it. We're going to route the microphone cable along the surface that the stand is sitting on. So press 3 on the number pad for right side view and zoom out until you can see the cable and the base of the microphone stand. Since the cable is going to be routed along the surface that the microphone stand is sitting on, it would be helpful to see the surface while we're routing the cable. So switch to wireframe view for this step. We're going to extrude the cable by using the control key and the left mouse button. Every time we click the left mouse button while holding down the control key, the face will be extruded to the position of the mouse cursor. So hold down the control key and then click the left mouse button repeatedly to route the cable along the surface. Then press 7 on the number pad for top view. Now hold down the control key again and click the left mouse button repeatedly to route the cable to the left. Put the last two clicks close to each other to help sharpen the edges at the end. Now switch back to solid view and then press tab for object mode. This is what it looks like. Next we'll set up the camera view. 
I'm setting up the camera view before setting up the lighting because I'm going to set the positions of the lamps based on the location of the camera. So press zero on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press N again to close the properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. Next, I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. Now let's set up the lighting. Select the lamp from the outliner. And then select the object data panel. Then come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Next, make sure that the point lamp is selected and set the size to 3. Then click the Use Nodes button and set the strength to 10,000. Now we'll move the lamp into position. So press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then zoom out until you can see both the microphone and the camera. I'm going to be using three lamps for the lighting setup, and the positions of the lamps will be based on the location of the camera. If the location of your camera is different, then you may want to set up the lighting differently. To move this lamp into position, press G to move and drag the lamp directly to the left of the microphone and straight above the camera. Next, we're going to duplicate the lamp. So press Shift D and drag the duplicate directly in front of the microphone and straight to the right of the camera. Then press Shift D again and drag the duplicate directly to the right of the microphone at the same distance as the other lamps. For this lamp, change the strength to 2000. Now let's set up the materials. We'll start with the surface that the microphone is sitting on. So right click it to select it. Then select the material panel and click the new button. For the surface type, select the principled shader. Set the base color to its maximum white value. Then set the roughness value to one. Now right click the thumb knob to select it. Then click the new button. For the surface type, select the principled shader. Set the base color to a hex value of 9B, 9B, 9B. This is going to be a metal material, so set the metallic value to 1. Then set the roughness value to 0.3. Name this material metal. I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see what this looks like. Now let's use this same material for some of the other objects. I'll switch back to solid view for this. Now right click the thumb screw on the other side to select it. Then click the small button that's next to the new button and select the metal material. Then right click the piece that goes over the top of the microphone and select the metal material. Then right click the microphone screen and select the metal material. Then right click the bottom of the microphone and select the metal material. Then right click the microphone stand bracket and select the metal material. Then right click the bottom thumb screw and select the metal material. This is what it looks like in rendered view. Now let's set the material for the blue ring. So right click it to select it and then click the new button. For the surface type, select the principled shader. Set the base color to a hex value of 4658 Nine six. This is a metal material, so set the metallic value to 1. Then set the roughness to 0.4. These settings will make the ring and the button blue, but we want the button to be silver. So press Tab for edit mode. 
then right click one of the faces on the button to select it. Then press Ctrl L to select all of the linked vertices. This will select only the button mesh. Now click this plus button to add another material. Then click the small button next to the new button and select the metal material. Now we need to click the Assign button so that the metal material will be applied to the selected mesh. Now press Tab to return to object mode. I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see what this looks like. The ring is blue and the button is silver. Now let's set the material for the microphone cable. So right click it to select it, and then click the new button. For the surface type, select the principled shader. Set the base color to a hex value of 836C51. Then set the roughness to 0.5. These settings will make both the cable and the thumb screw brown. We want the thumb screw to be silver, so press tab for edit mode. Then right click one of the faces on the thumb screw to select it. Then press Ctrl L to select all of the linked vertices, which will select only the thumb screw mesh. Now click this plus button to add another material. Then click the small button next to the new button and select the metal material. Now click the assign button so that the metal material will be applied to the selected mesh. Now press tab to return to object mode. I'll switch to rendered view so that we can see what this looks like. The cable is brown and the thumb screw is silver. Now let's set the material for the microphone filter that's under the screen. So find the filter in the outliner and select it. Then click the new button and for the surface type select the principled shader. Set the base color to a hex value of CEBB94. Then set the roughness to 0.5. Next we're going to add a texture to the filter to make it look like it's made out of a cloth material. So go down to the displacement section. Set the displacement type to checker texture. Then set the scale value to 200. This is a rendered close-up of the microphone filter. Now let's set the material for the base of the microphone stand. So right click it to select it. Then click the new button. And for the surface type, select the principled shader. Set the base color to black. Then set the roughness to 0.3. Currently, the surface of the base is smooth, so we're going to add a texture to it. So go down to the Displacement section and set the Displacement type to Math. Then set the Math type to Multiply. This will let us control the strength of the texture that we will be adding. Set the top value to 0 0.05, which will make the strength small. For the bottom value, click the small button on the right and select the Voronoi texture. Then set the scale value to 150, which will make the texture smaller. This is a rendered close-up of the base of the microphone stand. Now that the materials are set up, let's see what this looks like. So press 0 on the number pad for camera view, and then switch to rendered view. Everything looks good, so we're ready to set things up to render the final image. So switch to the render panel. Set the resolution to 100%. Then open the sampling section. This is where you can set the number of render samples. The larger this value is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. I'm going to keep it set to 128. Now switch to the Render Layers panel and add a check mark next to Denoising. 
This is a new feature that was added to Blender in version 2.79 and it can help reduce image noise in the final render. Now I'm going to save the project. It's a good idea to do this before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. Now we'll render the image. So from the render menu, I'll select render image. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the escape key or you can click the X next to the render progress bar. This is going to take a few minutes to render, so I'll pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished and this is the final image. To save the image, go to the image menu and select save as image, or you can press F3. I'm going to name this image mike.png. If you want to return to the 3D view, then click this menu and select 3D view. To go back to the rendered image, click the menu and select UV image editor. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.